When a platforming game is linear and narrow, a player really gets lots of satisfaction from being able to get from A to B and doing all of the moves at the precise time in the right way to complete the level in the game. There are other games though that revel in the ability to let you choose your own path and present almost like a sandbox playground with a variety of different methods and traversal ways to get from A to B. And it's that latter that Shim, today's game review, very much shines in. In Shim, which is a 3D platformer viewed from an isometric perspective that's rotatable to change your view, you play as a Shim, which is a creature that sits in the shadows. Every animal, human, and large object has one, and at the beginning of the game, a human falls over and their shim falls out of their shadow and gets knocked out and left behind. And the idea is that you then play as that character, trying to find and rejoin back on their human so that they can live symbiotically again. This takes its place across multiple levels and scenarios where you're charged with getting from A to B through a street or through a factory or through a park or in a supermarket. Each scenario is different and every object, human and anything that moves around in these lively hustle bustle environments enables you to hop from shadow to shadow like a frog and this game feels like a frog platformer because you can only splash from one shadow to another and you have the ability to press and hold a jump and work out which direction you're going to go and when you let go you can do one big leap and then you can have an optional turn on or off a ball second mini hop to get to where you need to get to. And that's really where the difficulty levels of Shim comes into play because you'll have the you can't have the second hop version of the game, which is extremely hard, or you can have the much more forgiving secondary hop option that allows you to correct mistakes and sort out your trajectory. However, you have free reign in how you get from A to B in each of the levels. So it could be that you hop along some of the bollards and the lampposts and the street lights and the benches on the sidewalk. Or you could hop onto a car and a bicycle and watch them pedal or drive down the road and take them with you, and you choose where to hop out. It could be that you've got pedestrians walking across a zebra or pelican crossing and you jump onto their shadows as they walk around but then they go off on a trajectory and you hop from shadow to shadow of a human or maybe pick up the cat or the dog that's walking around too. It's that freedom that really opens up shimmers in creative sandbox game where you have clear objectives but often you're given lots of choice and variety in how you get there. The levels themselves are larger than really what the end goal is that you're trying to get to. And that's because most of the levels will have optional objects for you to collect. And these will be objects that are fully coloured in with no particular shadow to them. And when you land on them, they become part of your collection and a new shim kind of bounces into the world and joins it. And so it kind of becomes like a little cute cartoon thing. But... It means that not only are you trying to just get from A to B and working out the most fun way to do it, there's a bit of a hidden object collectathon going on on the side as well. The other cool thing with Shim is that sunlight and time of day becomes a factor in how levels are designed. So there's a definite day-night cycle as you go through the game that repeats itself. And at the beginning of the day, you'll get some dawn levels and the shadows will be quite long in one direction. Then you'll get the midday sunny levels where the shadows are much shorter, but defined. And quite often those levels are a bit more hustle bustle with lots of options to move around. And then as you start to get towards the evening, shadows get longer and really drawn out. And so what you're trying to do is line up from a timing perspective when you might want to jump from person to person or catch a street lamp that is now really, really extended with its shadow. Or you're looking at barriers and car parks and turning them on and off so that they move up and down and connect up together, whereas previously those shadows might not have reached there before. And then the harder levels are when nighttime hits. And this is often when you've got car headlights 
moving around a level and these are slightly more prescriptive and narrow because quite often you have to move as the headlights move around levels and highlight objects and shadows or bicycle lights highlight what's ahead in the road and as they come across street lamps the two lights cancel out the shadow and you need to be able to hop to where you're going to go to next. This introduces quite often the ability to rotate around this isometric view because often you're going round a shopping corner street or you're going into a intersection junction of traffic and you need to work out from where the sun's coming from where's best for you to play shadow wise because sometimes there might be a really thin shadow at the back of some objects that you can use or you might start off going in one direction and be changing to another. And in order to get the best out of the shadows, you need to rotate the environment so that you can get the best use of the shadows and where they're projecting to. Alongside all of this, and the really, I love the aesthetic of this game. I think it's really beautifully stylized and it feels hand drawn in a sketchy diorama way. I really like it and the fact that whenever you land on an object's shadow you can then press an interact button and everything does something so dogs will yap ducks will quack uh, parking ticket meters will start spitting out tickets dustbins will spew out rubbish when you're in the supermarket you can kind of roll melons off the tables onto the floor it's hugely interactive and again it goes back to that playful sandbox world that makes just going off the beaten track and trying things fun and enjoyable. Alongside that as well is a relaxed, calming, bubbly, synthy soundtrack that reminds me a little bit of Pixel Junk Monsters and um, Autograph that did the soundtrack for that where it's bubbly and cutesy and approachable but also quite calming and soothing because it's as if the bounce of the shim is like a frog and that's being played out in the soundtrack itself so it works really well. Now I really enjoyed my time with shim and that's because it's a creative playground but I do think if you're one of those gamers that would prefer to speed run through things and don't want to go off the beaten track Shim might not be the best game recommendation for you because you'll miss about 40% of the game trying to narrow the path of, of, from beginning to end all the way through because the fun for me was in that exploration and trying to interact with every object I came across and being stupid and trying new ways of doing things. I would also say though that the experience you get at level one of Shim is the exact same experience you get in every other level afterwards and there's like well over 50 so you'll be playing for hours and it's just the environments get more tricky to navigate around and some of them become a little bit more timing based particularly when you get into those later night levels where lights cancel each other out and shadows disappear and reappear and you've got to sometimes twist around the environment and preempt jumps on a timing basis and it's not difficult and that's a good thing, but it also means that some people might feel slightly burnt out from Shim if you try to do it in big long sit-ins. So I recommend chonking up this game over multiple evenings, playing a few levels, really enjoying the exploration of it, and then parking it because it keeps Shim alive and fresh so that you enjoy the fact that it's quite a one-note platforming experience, but you're focused in on the exploration and the playful sandbox nature of it instead of the challenge element of it. I have enjoyed Shim, I do recommend it. And if you're looking for something that is aesthetically really different, but quite inviting and relaxing and open-ended for you to play, Shim, I think would be a great recommendation for you. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.